May the second, 68th day, Ukraine bravely stands the ground in the bloody war unleashed by Russia. May the second, in the city of pain and pride, Mariupol is the second day of the long-awaited evacuation of civilians from the Azovstal plant. Nevertheless, people had been waiting for it since 7 a.m., but the buses did not arrive on time. And by the evening of May the 2nd, the evacuation of people from Mariupol still had not started. The Mariupol City Council reported that a new evacuation was scheduled for the morning of May the 3rd. Also, the evacuation of military men, including the seriously injured ones, has not yet been agreed with the Russian side. There are several hundred of them in the plant hospital. More than a hundred women, children and the elderly people were evacuated from the Azovstal plant as early as May the 1st. But as of the evening of May the 2nd, they still had not reached their destination. But they were already on the territory of the Zaporizhia region. Despite the agreement on a two-day silence regime, smoke was noticed above the Azovstal plant again on May the 2nd. At the same time, the Russian military continues to remove the bodies of the dead Mariupol residents to mass graves. To do this, the occupiers cynically use trucks on which they bring humanitarian aid to the city. But next to the old graves, the new ones appear, says the Mariupol mayor Vadim Boychenko. Because of the total lack of quality medical care, people with cancer and chronic illnesses have almost no chance. The number of victims of Russian aggression continues to grow. Mikhailo Podolyak, advisor to the head of the president's office, confirmed that during the 68 days of war in Mariupol, the number of victims goes into the tens of thousands. In the year 2019, 27 civilians died in Donbass. In 2028, in the year 2021, 15. After a month of the full-scale war, the death toll in Mariupol alone reached tens of thousands. No one has brought as much pain and grief to the residents of Donbass as Russia has brought since 2014 and especially today. On the 8th anniversary of the Odessa tragedy, the invaders shelled the city. A missile hit the dormitory. It is known that a 15-year-old boy was killed. The boy's sister is seriously injured. The roof on a religious building nearby is blown off. There are no military facilities near the buildings where the shell hit. Exactly eight years ago, on May 2, 2014, there were mass clashes between the pro-Russian activists and Ukrainian patriots in Odessa. Then, as a result of street battles and a fire in the trade union house, 48 people were killed. The Russian occupiers are doing everything they can to create a food crisis in Ukraine. On May the 2nd, they carried out an air strike on an elevator in the Dnipropetrovsk region. As a result, grain storage exploded. Another enemy shell hit a pig farm. The animals were not injured. Also, according to the Zaporizhia Regional Military Administration, under the gunpoint, the occupiers forced local farmers to give up their grain, so they can illegally take it to Crimea. They were beating people, and then they tore off the Golden Cross and forced them to eat it. The victims of the occupiers' inhumane atrocities are residents of the village of Dimer, 30 kilometers away from Kiev. Their story was told by Radio Liberty journalists. A 73 years old Mikhailo was stopped by the Russian occupiers right in the street for no reason. Afterwards, they started mocking him. <laughs> Then the man was put into a car, taken to the woods and thrown into a pit. Among the 12 people the Russian soldiers kept in the pit, there was Oleg. His leg was broken by the executioners. And when they noticed a golden cross around his neck, they forced the man to swallow the Christian symbol under the fear of death. As of May the 2nd, 1,202 bodies of Ukrainians killed by the Russians were found in the Kyiv region. Russian soldiers destroyed one of the best educational institutions in the Luhansk region. The Lysychansk Gymnasium survived two world wars and the fighting for the city in 2014, but now it has been burned to the ground. This gymnasium was built by the Belgians more than 100 years ago, and it was one of the 100 best educational institutions 
in Ukraine. The gymnasium caught fire as a result of targeted shelling of the building by the Russian military. The fire raged for several hours. During the war, at least 1,570 educational institutions in Ukraine were destroyed or damaged by Russian occupiers. The Russian militaries destroy and drop hospitals in Ukraine. In addition, Ukrainians are prohibited from using medical services in the temporarily occupied territories. It is also forbidden to deliver medicines from the territories controlled by Ukraine. This was reported by the Chief Directorate of Intelligence of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. All equipment provided since 2014 under the international donors programs by the government of Ukraine has been taken from the Starobilsk Infectious Diseases Department Luhansk region. At the Vovchansk Regional Anti-Tuberculosis Dispensary Kharkiv region, patients with open tuberculosis were denied medical care and were kicked out to the streets. At the same time, in the Kharkiv region, hospitals are being filled with wounded Russians. The medical personnel are being forced to work for the occupiers. All doctors undergo a polygraph examination procedure. Those who did not pass it were forcibly sent to the front line. Similar cases are recorded in the Zaporizhia and Kherson regions. Staff are prohibited from providing medical care to the local population. Also, they are not allowed to evacuate to the territory controlled by Ukraine. In the city, where one can still smell death, a little miracle has happened. A cat has been rescued from the high-rise house in the city of Borodyanka in Kyiv region. The ginger-colored cat had spent almost two months on the seventh floor of the destroyed building and then was noticed by people. To save the cat, a special rescue operation was arranged on May the 2nd. Vets say that this is a female cat who is approximately 15 years old. After the treatment, the activists will find a new home for the animal. Where can you find a safe place if your city is under siege? Is it an unusual residential building? No. In hospitals or schools? No. In a theater, the heart of your city. Far away from any military objects. Yes, that's a good idea. Is there any other way we could warn Russian pilots about kids hiding in the theater? Yes, capital letters, in Russian. That way we will definitely be safe. But only if murdering our children isn't their goal. <laughs>